Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Ahlan wa sahlan Welcome, my name is Yaqad Zaman As you guys all are aware And if you're not aware, please check out my channel Check out the videos that I make on my YouTube channel uh, The channel is basically for you guys So the aim is to help you guys to be able to understand the Arabic language And all the other things that come with it So yeah, that's what it's all about Now, before we continue, hit the like button Hit the subscribe button Hit the bell button and leave a comment below. This series is dedicated to me trying to show you a bit about my past, the books that I've uh, procured over the years, and uh, a little bit about the history and maybe you know some uh, some tips and advice that I can give you guys. So the book I am showing you guys today is this book over here. This book is called Yatimatul Bayan. Now this book was actually given to me uh, as a gift. It was basically in the third year, I was in the third year of the Alimiya course. Uh, this was in Pakistan, Karachi. And uh, so third year would make it 2000, I think it was 2003, I think it was. 2002 or 2003? Yeah, maybe 2003. I can't remember. But it was one of those years, 2002, 2003. And uh, I actually came first in the class. So I came first in the exams. So we used to have three exams a year, basically, in the Madrasa. So there was what they called uh, Semai which say is like in Persian for three, Sheshmai, six six month exam, and then Salana, yearly exam. So you had three exams in the year. Some of the madrasas used to have two exams in the year. Some of them had monthly exams. So it wasn't something that was fixed. It was just that ours coincidentally had this uh, three times a year exam. Uh, so uh, w they were kind of like, it, it was like every year you'd find that they, they would try to introduce something else to, you know, to in in encourage the students to, to compete with one another in the exams. I think that was a really nice thing. And sometimes they would usually give money to students. And we were foreigners, so money isn't really a, a big issue for us uh, in the sense that the amount they would be giving to students that came first was probably something like a thousand rupees, two thousand rupees, which works out to be like 10 pounds, 20 pounds. Um, so, but the books was very nice. I enjoyed the books a lot. So I got money as well and I got books as well. So from amongst the books that I received was this one, Yatima Bayan. And I also received uh, a few more books. I'll try to remember which ones I had. One was called uh, Abu Hanifa by Imam uh, by Sheikh Abu Zahra. And there was a few others as well. I'll have to look at which ones I had. So this book is basically written by the founder of the madrasa that I studied in. Uh, his name was uh, Sheikh Yusuf Benori, one on Yusuf Benori. And he was a very well-known scholar um, at his time. Um, and then uh, he kind of established a madrasa where he would teach uh, very, very high science, advanced sciences, like ifta, fatwa, and uh, usul hadith. And uh, that's basically how he started off initially. And then slowly it began to grow, and then they started to teach other years. And eventually, you know, you had all the eight years of the Alimiya course, and then takhassus, which was advanced specialization uh, in fiqh, and then hadith, and uh, hifz classes. So he wrote this book. Right. And this book is basically, you can say, like an introduction to the science of uh, tafsir or Quran even, usul al-Quran. This is more ulum al-Quran. So sometimes you have books which are known as usul al-tafsir and sometimes you have some books which are known as ulum al-Quran books. Right. So usually they differentiate between the two by saying things like usul al-tafsir books are more to do with the principles that were used by the scholars of, of tafsir, mufassirun. Um, of how they used to write their books, right? So what kind of sort of like common themes you're going to find in the tafsir books, for example, like, you know, linguistic discussions, or maybe even something like um, how you would uh, reconcile between different types of ayats, and how would you reconcile between uh, tafsir of Quran and tafsir of hadith, and tafsir of language, um, and then different levels of tafsirs as well. So if you want to know more about that, I would suggest a book like Itqan would be very useful for that by Imam Suyuti, Al-Itqan. That's like really sort of like uh, nice and, and, and concise in that sense. Uh, but Ulum Al-Quran is usually to do with the Quran itself. So like in the Quran, like in the Quran itself, the 114 chapters, common sort of uh, themes, subjects, maybe even like some hidden sort of like sciences that you can extrapolate from them. Uh, so that's basically what, what he wrote So he was a very like uh, erudite Erudite? Erudite? What is it? Uh, put in the comments I don't know how to pronounce it I'll have to check Google pronunciation uh, So he was a very um, well-researched scholar Like in the science of fiqh, hadith and tafsir as well like, Really, really good So 
this i would say was very difficult for me one of the reasons it was very difficult was because um uh, i i actually found the arabic quite hard yeah uh this is this can you see that my name's in there there's a guy called fayyad i don't know he put his name there as well yeah so i don't know fayyad ahmed so he's written Thamina. So he's written that. I just written, wrote my name at the top. And so the Arabic is quite quite tough. If you, want, if you want to have a go, maybe pause it if you know Arabic. Try to have a, a, a go at reading this Arabic. Yeah, Arabic is, is a bit tough to kind of navigate through. It's not like your average sort of uh, Arabic reading book. So in itself, it's like filled with idioms and nice, beautiful expressions. So, so this um, this is the book I received, and initially I wasn't able to read it in the third year. But what I would do was I would attempt to try and read a little bit. This was a book I really liked of his, and another book that I liked of his was Nafhatul Ambar, yeah, a book called Nafhatul Ambar. So Nafhatul Ambar, I think I got that one as well as a gift. Yeah, but inshallah, when I come to that, I'll, I'll talk more about that. And th that was quite difficult as well because that was more to do with the life of his teacher, Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmiri, who was a, a really uh, uh, well-established uh, scholar in India. And um, so he kind of like learned a lot, learned a lot from him. But this book, uh, like I said, uh, I wasn't able to read it in the beginning. It was very difficult for me. And that's what I would say to you guys as well. If you guys are studying the Arabic language, uh, don't worry about uh, getting hold of books and not being able to read them. That's, that doesn't matter. Because inshallah, a time will come, right, where that book will start to, you know, call out to you and, you know, you're going to read that book and you're going to find so many interesting things. You say, whoa, I wasn't able to read this book in the past, but now all of a sudden I can read the book. So it kind of like, it gives hope. There's hope in books. Don't give up on your books. Yeah. And if you give up on your books, then send them to me. I'll take them. So this is called Yatima Tulbayan. Yatima means like the orphan. Yeah, Yatima Tulbayan. So it's like the orphan girl. Bayan. It's like Al Bayan Al Yatim. Yeah, it's like the expression that's the orphan expression, one of its kind. It doesn't have its parent. So maybe by calling it Yatimatul Bayan, he's like saying like there isn't really much out there that has been done on this science. Like you've got the Fawzul Kabir, which is also a nice work, which you guys can check out. I actually started, but I haven't finished yet. I need to get back to that. But yeah, so so it's like the orphan kind of book. This is the Yatima. Yeah, that orphan girl book, which is uh, which 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 doesn't have like a parental support. Um, so I don't know. Does he mention in the in the beginning why why he called it uh, Yatima Tul Bayan? I can't remember. You know. Uh, let's have a check. أما بعد فهذه إدة أبحاث في لغة القرآن الكريم جمعتها في عجلة مستوفز تبصرة لإخواني طلبة العلم تلاميذ بلا 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 أوكي أنا أدري العلماء الإسلامية عادوا القرون الخالية في غمارها وغاصوا هذا عادوا وأنا أدري وأنا أدري أن ذخيرة وافرة تمثل بين ثمرات أقلام الأعيان كالحافظ زركشي أقول إن إن ثمرات غمارات البحار واللجج تلاتم وهذه حمعات وأبلهم ليقولنا القاصر التي قصر تقصر yeah, so yeah, I think it's kind of like out of humbleness is calling it Yatima Tul Bayan. It's like it's kind of like saying that I'm not really qualified to write a book on this topic. Scholars before me wrote on this topic, so this is like the Yatim, the kind of orphan, sort of like Muqaddima. Yeah, it's quite nice. I think it's nice. Anyway, so he writes this book. So it's got some really good sections in here. So let me just kind of like uh, mention to you kind of some of the things you're going to come across. Uh, so he talks about um, like different kind of early groups that came about and attempted to do tafsir of the Quran and how the Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah sort of like uh, approached the tafsir of the Quran. Um, and then he talks about like this historic sort of um, um, libraries of books that we have on Quran. Right? And he talks about like a book that he came across in uh, Egypt, one of the libraries, and he was saying it was like, 5,000 volumes long. So it was old 5,000 volumes. But the point was is that, you know, there are books out there in the past, voluminous books that were written on, on the Quran. Uh, and then he talks about, uh, like, historically, 
scholars, how did he work on, on the tafsir? Zikr al-Tafasil Arba al-Mutawid. He talked about four, four famous tafsirs that he really kind of likes. Um, and if, I'm, if I can remember, I think tafsir ibn Kathir, tafsir uh, Abu Sa'ud, tafsir al-Razi, and I think one was tafsir uh, Ruh al-Ma'ani. Yeah, two were Hanafis and two were, I think, were Shafis or others. Zamakshari, Zamakshari. Wait, let me let me check what they are, because I've read this book a very long time ago, and I, and I, I know I apologize, guys. I should have read this recently just to kind of brush up on, so I can tell you facts as they are instead of having to check them up. But but yeah, yeah. So he says Al uh, Awal Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Okay, that's right. Next Tafsir Razi, which is known as Mafati Al Ghayb. All right, got that right. Number uh, three is Tafsir Ruh Al Maani. Got that right. Four is Abu Sa'ud. Oh, I got them all right. So, well, <laughs> I didn't have to read it again. <laughs> okay, so then he talks about that. And then he talks about in uh, India, this sort of like uh, culture of writing tafsirs and individuals that came about, like Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan and then uh, Abul Kalam, Ad Dehlawi, Inayatullah Mashriqi. Yeah, uh, he talks about an interesting tafsir that was actually written, uh, you know, uh, Sawati al Ilham, that was written with letters that have no dots on there dotless yeah so it's like a kind of like an artwork and then he talks about um the concept of ijaz yeah i like the concept of ijaz he talks about here yeah jazz the different aspects of ijaz so those of you guys who are interested in things like the mir miraculous nature of the quran you know like how is the quran a miracle how is it something that cannot be replicated so he talks about the different ways that scholars looked at this and he mentioned some nice little points from his teacher, Sheikh Anusha Kashmiri. Uh, and one of the points Anusha Kashmiri actually mentions is like, he goes into why the Quran doesn't mention some words in Arabic that were well known at that time. Like sometimes he'll say, the word Al-Bab is mentioned, but not Lub is not mentioned. Uh, and he goes, that's, that seems to be an interesting thing of how beauty of a language sometimes can only be achieved by, by sequencing certain words together. That's the kind of like, one of the secrets that you need to be like very, very in touch with the culture and understanding of the language to be able to reach that level. Um, so he talks about and talks about this miraculous nature. One of the miraculous natures he says the Quran has is that it basically it's it's just not just one miracle. It's it's loads of miracles. It's like ijaz literally means to incapacitate someone. There's many ways that it can inca incapacitate uh, mankind. So he talks about it. anyway. Maybe if you guys are interested, maybe in the future I can do some little sort of like daras on this or something and you know, you guys can benefit. Uh, but yeah, so it's not really an exhaustive, I would say, work. But this is actually for the muqaddimah of his of his teacher's book, Sheikh Anna Shah Kashmiri's book, which is called Mushkilat al-Quran. So Mushkilat al-Quran was the book that was originally written by Sheikh Anwar Shah Kashmiri. And then his student, Sheikh Yusuf Banuri, he decided to write like a little muqaddimah introduction to it. And, and this was the introduction. And that's it, guys. So Jazakumullah Khair, thank you very much. And uh, I hope you guys benefit from this. You know, if you guys enjoy the work that I do, then please uh, consider becoming a patron or a supporter of the channel. Thank you to all the patrons that are patrons. And uh, can, you know, continue to support my channel, alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all of you guys. Uh, and the reason is, is simply because when you guys support my channel, it makes it much more easier for me to make more content. It makes it more content than I can provide more free of charge uh, courses and lessons for you guys. So. Jazakumullah khair and I will see you guys next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.